Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. My 28 female fiance, 31 male, told me he slept with his sister. All right, so here's a little background information. My fiance and I are at a wonderful place in our relationship. He is a superb guy who is attractive, sensitive, terrific, and hilarious in addition to being wonderful. Three months ago, he proposed to me, making me feel like the happiest girl on the face of the earth. I couldn't have asked for a better proposal than what I received. I had the impression that I knew all there was to know about him until lately. His challenging connection with his family has always been open and honest with me, and I appreciate him for his honesty and openness. As far as I'm aware, he and his elder sister, 33F, aren't really close and don't speak much with one another. She was the first person I'd ever met and I'd already been in a relationship with my now fiancé for four years at the time of our meeting. We even reside near to one another, just a few hundred miles apart yet in same state, as a matter of fact. The reason for his reluctance to pay her a visit, I had always assumed, was due to the fact that they were never particularly close in their relationship. When he was ten, his parents split, and she moved in with her father while he remained with his mother. It was always it to get him to pay a visit to her and her children since I wanted him to have a sense of belonging with his nieces and nephews. However, he always managed to come up with an excuse not to go. I'd had enough and made the decision to give up trying. So that there would be no misunderstandings, I inquired of him last week, when I was working on our Save the Dates, and asked for any addresses he had for his family members, including his sister. It was at this point that I saw him stiffening up, and he went on to say, she's not coming to the wedding. I was surprised. In spite of the fact that I'd given up on trying to get him to date her, it seemed strange to me that he wouldn't want her to be a guest at his marriage ceremony. Honestly, I'm praying that this was an isolated incident and that it never happens again. In the end, he couldn't come up with anything more imaginative than we don't get along. I urged him for an explanation, but he couldn't. In the course of my questioning, I said something to the effect that I didn't want him to feel bad about not inviting her, and he promptly responded by saying, I stuck with her, okay. I stayed steadfast in my convictions, and he reacted by saying, I slept with her, all right? The only thing I could do was sit there and stare at the ceiling, bewildered. Nonetheless, after the full force of his remarks has stunk in, I must further information in order to choose my next course of action. After much prodding, he eventually admitted that they had met around two years before we did, and that they had both been under the influence of alcohol at the time of their encounter. However, I wasn't sufficiently inebriated to be able to forget about it. Was it not the fact that he offered his apologies that continued to excite him on? These kind of incidents do happen from what I understand, but I'm not sure what to do in this particular scenario. Despite the fact that I'm meant to be putting together a wedding, I'm not sure I'll be able to look at him the same way after this experience. Of course he continues to have a special place in my heart. That continues to be the case today. However, I'm concerned that this will be something I'll never be able to get over. What should I do if I find myself in this situation? Is it essential for me to cancel my wedding? Is it necessary for me to cancel my wedding? Is it worthwhile for me to continue on this path? Is it really essential for us to go to therapy for something that I'm not even sure I want to think about right now? Any aid would be much appreciated. Edit. In response to several inquiries, I am now seeing a therapist on a regular basis. I've been there for approximately a year. I have an appointment next week, which I haven't had since he informed me. I'm proposing that he go to treatment as well, whether or not I decide to continue with him. I also know that my prying and nagging was ineffective. I know I'm not flawless. Story 2. When does the healing begin? Lost love. Because there is so much to say, this will turn into a Bible, but I'll make every attempt to keep it as short as possible to avoid being overwhelming. In spite of the fact that I'm now in therapy and don't think I have much to say, I feel the need to vent. Any and all advice and responses are much welcomed, as I'm actually hurting. I apologize for the disarray of this message. For eight years, we went through the normal ups and downs of every relationship, but nothing major ever happened between us. We simply clicked and rocked each other's worlds, eventually becoming best friends and then officially married, with family on both sides supporting and loving us. It was almost picturesque if you know what I mean. A lot of things were on my mind. I had plans for a marriage and children, and we were all on the same page about everything. I was over over heels in love with her at the time. 
Things seemed to be looking up when we got the tragic news that her mother was dying of cancer. I took it upon myself to seek her father for his approval to marry her, as we tried to come to terms with the news. I was granted his blessing very immediately after I approached him about it. I had a good relationship with her father, and the rest of the family did as well. I had a strategy in place and had said that I would wait until after coping with the dread of what was to come before popping the question. My life was shattered within a week after her mother's death. My closest friend, lover, and soon-to-be wife had cheated on me and married a co-worker, and my whole family had just abandoned me without a second thought. The woman approached me and informed me that I had done nothing wrong and that it was not my fault. As a caring husband, I was there for her when she needed me and did everything a loving guy would do, so I have no idea what she is talking about. When I got a text from her expressing remorse and apologizing for what she had done, I reacted angrily and blurted out the words. Despite the fact that I have continued to convey my concern, there has been no more contact. It is still possible to have an inexplicable and limitless amount of fury in me right now. The pain I'm feeling is unbearable, and I've never had such intense feelings in my life. When I think of what was, about how amazing that life was, I'm still in tears. My dreadful loathing for her and him leads me to want to kill her and him, and to wish such crimes on their heads, while I find myself lamenting her and sobbing for what was and what may have been. It's true that this is simply my wrath speaking, but I think that everyone deserves to feel joyful and loved, because these things are important and healthy and they should be felt and offered in equal proportion to everyone who wants them. The words family conjure up images of wrath and misery in me, and I'm having trouble knowing what it means to be a family at this moment in time. Since then, I've sought counseling, but I feel like I'm trapped in a cycle of self-deprivation as a result of it, constantly questioning myself, having random breakdowns sobbing or experiencing an enormous rush of hatred and rage, and wondering why someone would say I love you and then do these things to you. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. The depths to which I've descended, feeling suicidal, worthless, and as if my life is about to come to an end are beyond comprehension. In order to feel numb, I've spent all of my own funds on drunken, drug-fueled binges and escapades. I've totally lost any sense of logic and self-control, and I don't think I'll ever be able to function as a responsible adult in the future. Yes, I realize that I should continue my therapy and that time will eventually heal me. But when will that be? Nonetheless, despite my overwhelming want to quit up, I've been doing all I can to continue moving ahead. The use of drugs and alcohol is no longer a part of my life, and I still struggle with it, but it's not the same as it was before, and it's not like I want to think about these things or be in this frame of mind anymore. Throughout the day, I tell my inner voice that I do not love her, that I do not love what was, that I do not miss her, that I do not miss what was, that everything feels wrong, that life seems to be in a bad way right now. As a result of this dreadful period, I am lucky to have people who have been by my side, including an old acquaintance from a decade ago who I reached out to for assistance when I needed it. If it weren't for these individuals, the medications and treatment, I believe I would not be where I am now. However, the ramifications of my actions continue to haunt me today. My mental instability has persisted for at least the last six or seven months, Despite my efforts to overcome it via various mental gymnastics, I'm sick and tired of it, and I'm done with it. We appreciate your understanding that this letter is lengthy and convoluted, but I thought I wanted to explain myself in a different manner. We appreciate each and every one of you taking the time to read this. I'd want to take this opportunity to convey my hope that everyone who has read this is in a good position at this time. Regardless of how little or serious the challenges you are experiencing are, I wish you the best of health and a long and prosperous life, and I thank you once more for taking the time to read and react to my inquiries, and also for your aid. You have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in the year 2022, and everyone wishes you the best of luck.